We are back with our series, Heart Smarts, and anyone at any age can face a heart scare. And Allie, you actually brought this story to us because it's somebody you know really well. Absolutely, yes. It's my friend, Jesse. We work together at Peloton. And last year, at the age of 35, Jesse went through a scary experience that changed her life. Here's her story in her own words. My name is Jesse Malone. As a busy New Yorker, I'm constantly juggling early mornings for my job as a Peloton producer with my social calendar. One day in May of 2023, I was feeling nauseated, but I felt well enough to bike home like I normally would. On that ride, my smartwatch notified me that my heart rate was past 160 beats per minute. Soon after, my watch said that I had gone into AFib, or atrial fibrillation, an irregular and often very rapid heart rhythm. I went to the emergency room where I was immediately given help. Doctors were able to slow down my heart with medication, and the following day, I had a procedure to get my heart back to a normal rhythm. The whole experience left me feeling stunned. Doctors had explained what lifestyle habits could have led to this, so I knew I had to make a change, otherwise this could happen again. I started to prioritize sleep while cutting caffeine and alcohol and changing my diet. As I began to take care of myself more, I decided to train for something big, a marathon, one year from the day I got discharged from the hospital, and I did, grateful after the year I had. Oh my God! Wow, what a story. Jesse. Yes, and joining us now is my friend Jesse Malone, along with Dr. Mark Miller, a cardiac electrophysiologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital. Good morning to you both, and thank you so much for being here. Of course, yes. morning. Thank you. Um, you know, for my friends here and the folks that are watching, you and I get to talk every day. But for them, you know, how's your heart today, and how's your health? I'm doing great now. Thank goodness. Yeah. It's been it was a crazy year, um, but got myself back in shape, and I'm feeling great. Yeah. Jesse, the marathon was the curveball that I don't think any of us uh, right. expected in this story. Right. Can, can you share a little bit with us about what your life um, and your lifestyle looked like before all of this happened and then what it looks like now? Yeah, sure. I mean, early mornings, 5 a.m., just completely unprepared for the day. Um, as far as food, food preparation, I was drinking way too much coffee, wasn't prioritizing sleep. Mm -hmm. My health was on the back burner, and mm -hmm. now it's, that is priority number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing food prep on Sundays, huh. um, exercising even before work, like 3.30 in the morning. Less coffee? Running. Wow. Less, uh, no coffee at all. I wow. All right. Yeah, yeah, I cut caffeine, I cut alcohol, mm -hmm. anything that could possibly bring this back. I was like, it's out. Yeah. Like, this is about my life and health. And That's yeah. terrific. Uh, you know, we share something in common. I had, I had a, a health issue about a year and a half ago, and it, I first noticed because walking up the stairs, my my watch said I was 160 beats per minute. So, that, oh you know, yeah, same kind of thing. I called my doctor and, and you know, was able to do, take care of this. But, but Dr. Miller, while you didn't treat Jesse, uh, uh, for viewers who are wondering and watching, what are the symptoms and, and risk factors for AFib? So the symptoms of atrial fibrillation are palpitation, shortness of breath, decrease in exercise tolerance, fatigue, decrease in cognition, um, sometimes fainting episodes can occur if the heart rate's too fast or too slow. And the common risk factors are advancing age, hypertension, diabetes, mm -hmm. obesity, excess alcohol intake, excess caffeine intake, mm -hmm. and even psychosocial stressors. Uh, Je Jesse just mentioned the changes that she made in her life, cutting out coffee altogether. It's quite the feat, by the way. And some of the other changes. <laughs> Doc, is, is, is that the best way to prevent recurrence, just changing lifestyle habits? Yeah, I think there's definitely modifiable risk factors, such as weight loss is probably the most important. Um, and exercise regimens, like moderate exercise regimens, can decrease your risk of developing AFib by 20%. So if five people, for example, were to undergo an exercise regimen mm. over the course of six months, you'd prevent AFib in about one person. Wow, that's incredible. Now, Jesse, for you, I know one of your mantras is if you want your life to change, you have to change your life. And right. that's something that you've been living every single day. I'm a witness to that. You come into the locker room. We have conversations about how you've already worked out or you're going to work out after work. You've also dived really deep into nutrition, getting certified as a nutritionist. And right. the New York Marathon is on the horizon for yes. you, another marathon. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with the changes, the active changes that you, have, you are pursuing? How are you experiencing them? Right. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about the New York City Marathon. I'm running with the American Heart Association, yeah. uh, the New York City team. Um, diving into nutrition was because on Instagram, people start seeing your changes and they're like, how, do you, how are you doing this? Mm -hmm. How did you get to this point? And of course, I could say what I did, but I wanted more information about how I can help people as a whole. Because that's, I feel like my whole entire life has changed to spread awareness about this and be able to help people in the future, not, not have this happen. Wow. wow, I'm so, so proud of you. Thank really. you so much. I'm just so proud of you. Thank Jesse God. and Dr. Miller, thank you so thank much. You.
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.